Hello and welcome back to Citizens Forum. We're recording this on Tuesday, December 18th, 2018, and I'd like to thank our lovely volunteers and the Shaw staff for helping us put this production together again. And today I have an interesting guest, a local author, Garnet Schulhauser, and he will talk about his uh, books that he's written and also an interesting technique for a healing modality called QHHT, which is quantum healing hypnosis technique. Quantum healing hypnosis technique. I tend to s switch the two H's around. But um, anyway, without further ado, welcome to the show, Garnet, and uh, I'd like you to tell us how did you get started in this from your career as a corporate attorney in Alberta? Well, it started way back in uh, 2007 when I was still practicing law. And I was walking down the street one day in, in Calgary. I was practicing law in Calgary. And all of a sudden, out of nowhere, a homeless man just jumped out in front of me. And he looked like a typical homeless man with like uh, dirty slept in clothes and scraggly beard and, and long unkept hair. <clears throat> but he was different because he had these amazing, dazzling, sparkling blue eyes. And I felt, uh, uh, I felt two things. First of all, I felt that he was looking right down into the depths of my soul. And I felt that he knew everything about me, everything I've ever said or done in my life. He even knew my deepest and darkest secrets, which was funny because I'd never met the man before. But instead of uh, stepping around him or, or getting away from him, I stood there because he was sending me this gaze. His eyes were sending me this, this gush of pure, unconditional love. Wow. It was infusing my whole body with an amazing sense of peace and security and well-being. It was like the most amazing feeling I've ever had in my life. And I just, and I enjoyed it. I was standing there like a deer caught in the headlights until he broke the spell by saying to me, why are you here? And then he promptly disappeared into a nearby store. But when I finally collected my wits, I went into the store to find him. And there was only one entrance and one exit. I walked in the store. He was nowhere to be seen. I walked back out in the street, up and down for several blocks trying to find him, but he had disappeared into thin air. So that, that evening I resolved to myself that I had to go back and try to find him the next day. And so I did. Same time, same street, I went to the, the place where I had met him before, walked up and down for a few blocks. I was about to give up and lose hope when I spotted him sitting on a bench all by himself. So I walked up to him and I said, who are you and why did you stop me the other day? And he said, I'm a soul just like you. I'm here to answer your questions and help you on your journey. And then my skeptical lawyer brain kicked in. <laughs> and I said to him, why do you think you could help me when you can't even help yourself? Because you look like you've been sleeping on the street for weeks and you smell like a dead fish. <laughs> well, he cracks me this big smile and he says, you know, looks can be deceiving because you look like you're a very successful corporate lawyer with everything under control but we both know that's just a facade. He said, you've been asking yourself all the big questions in life over the last number of years and you haven't found the answers yet. He says, if you want to find your answers, sit down and chat with me. And if you don't want to do that, then go back to your office and see if you can find your answers and all those emails waiting for you on your computer. Well, luckily my intuition was screaming at me to say, sit down and talk to this guy. What do I have to lose, half an hour of my life? So I sat down and we began a conversation that ended up uh, going and continuing off and on for about the next several months. And he told me early on his name was Albert and he was one of my spirit guides in disguise. And I found out later that I was the only one who ac could actually see him or touch him. I could feel him. He was, he was solid. He told me that, it, that no one else could have seen him that day, only me. And so if somebody had been passing by the bench that day, they would have seen me sitting by myself, talking to myself, apparently, because they couldn't see Albert. And so he showed up in, in the homeless man manifestation for the first three times. And then after that, he was just a voice in my head and we communicated by telepathy. Now, did anybody think you were nuts when you started having these experiences? Well, or? I never told anyone. You never told anyone. No, I, I, didn't, I didn't even tell my wife. Were I, you afraid to tell people? Yes, I was. I was afraid to tell my wife and my sons and certainly I wasn't going to tell my law partners. They would have had me hauled away in a straitjacket, <laughs> you know. So there's no way I was telling anyone. And so I had this, this, this private conversation that went on for the, off and on for a year. Um, and uh, about, about a year after I, I uh, first met him, um, I decided, you know, practicing law was just not for me anymore and that I had to set off on a different course of action. And so a year after I met Albert, I retired from the law, moved out to Vancouver Island, 
and I began uh, writing the manuscript for my first book, Dancing on a Stamp. And, and, and the reason I wrote the book was because Albert said early on in our conversation, he said, I'm not just here to satisfy your curiosity, I want you to buy, write a book about my revelations so that everyone would have access to them. And that sort of took me back a bit because I had not not even dreamed of writing a book. It wasn't on my radar screen. Uh, but he's very gently persuasive. And after a while, I agreed, okay, I'm going to write the book. And so I wrote the, the manuscript for my first book. How long did that take book. you? Quite a while. It probably took me maybe a year and a half. It was slow going. I, I, I wasn't used to being an author. And I, I would write drafts. And I, I, I think I rewrote the manuscript like eight or nine times. Wow. Uh, before I decided to, to, to find a, a, a publisher. But even after... I finished the manuscript, I was, I was hesitant, and I thought, you know, if I publish this book, I'm going to lose a lot of my old friends, a lot of my law colleagues are going to think I'm crazy, I wasn't sure what my family was going to think about it, and so I, I struggled with that for quite a while, and finally I said, to heck with it, I'm going to get it published, let the chips fall where they may, and, and so then I saw the publisher. And when, what year was that? I got the publisher, uh, an offer to publish in December of 2011 and it was published, released in September of 2012. So you've been on Vancouver Island since 2010 or so, and then... Well, actually, 2008. Oh, 2008, yeah. wow. Yeah, I, di I didn't get at writing the manuscript right away, and once I started, it took okay. a while, so it was just, you know, Albert had to sort of sometimes hit me over the head with a two-by-four <laughs> to get me going. Well, that's fascinating. Now, how did you get involved then with uh, the QHHT? Did that sort of naturally follow? From yeah, see what happened was the publisher for my, well all four of my books um, is Ozark Mountain Publishing. Oh, okay. And, and the founding um, uh, person for that publishing company is Dolores Cannon. And so I was, I spoke, I've been in Arkansas three times to speak at their transformation conference. I met Dolores once, she passed away in 2014. Mm -hmm. um, and I was aware that she had this program called QHHT, sort of generally vaguely aware, but I didn't really pay much attention to it. When I finished the manuscript from my fourth book, I said to my spirit guide, Albert, so what should I do now? Should I write book five? What do you want me to do? He says, put book five on the back burner for now. I want you to take the QHHT course. And it's sort of like, you know, the light bulb went on. And I thought, yeah, that makes sense. So I took the, the two courses. I took level one and I took level two. So now I'm a level two practitioner. And can you uh, give us an overview of QHHT? Yeah, it's, it's a hypnosis technique developed by Dolores Cannon, who is the founder of my publishing company. And she developed this over a period of like 40 years and, she, and, and, and kept on changing it and perfecting it. And uh, what it is basically is it, it puts the clients into a very deep trance that, that called the, the theta level of trance, the deepest level you can go. And, and, and from there, there's two aspects to the, uh, to the induction. When a client goes into the induction, the first thing is they go back to one or more past lives. And it could be a past life they had on Earth. It could even be a past life on another planet. Uh, and so they go through, and, and when they're in the past life, they're actually reliving the past life. So they're actually, whatever they're seeing, doing, whatever's happening to them, it's sort of like they're reliving it. So it can get quite emotional sometimes. If, you know, I've had clients who, you know, with tears streaming down their cheeks because they're, uh, they're, they're seeing their wedding day or the birth of their first child or whatever. It could be tears of joy or tears of grief, whatever. When that's done, then we get to the good part, which is we, we summon their higher self. Now, a person's higher self is sort of the highest part of a person's soul, most, collectly, most closely aligned to the, to the source, okay? Mm -hmm. Higher self has been with, your higher self has been with you right from day one uh, when you were born, and also knows everything about all your previous lives. And they're there to help you. They, they want you to uh, have a, a fulfilling journey, the one that you intended to have before you, uh, before you incarnated. And so when we get to the higher self, the client brings in, at our request, a list of questions. And we ask, uh, and, and as a practitioner, I'll ask the higher self the questions and get the answers. And it's all recorded so that the client, after the session, can listen to it and, and get all the answers. And so and, and the answers, are, the questions could be anything. It could be relationship. It could be like, when am I going to find my life partner? How do I find my life partner? It could be career, like, uh, should I stay with my job? Should I change my career? What city should I live in? Uh, it could be health issues. It could be like, why do I have this pain in my stomach that n the doctors can't figure out? Uh, you know, why, why do I have recurring dreams throughout my life? Why were there missing segments in some part of my life that, um, that I can't explain? So questions like that, and they get really good answers from their higher self. And I, I'd like to say here that uh, I met Garnet by doing one of these sessions, and you successfully regressed me back to several previous lives. And 
it's a friend of mine asked me, you know, well, do you believe in that stuff? And I said, well, it's really hard to, to say. I, I know that I experienced something that was amazing. And I, I know that I saw things that were real and I felt like I was there. And so while I don't, I, I can't say that I have a new belief system entirely because of this, it's sort of, it's like it opened a door and mm -hmm. I know that there's something there. I don't know necessarily, I mean, I'm a, I'm a really, uh, I'm a doubting Thomas when it gets to this, down to this kind of thing. I have to, I have, to have some kind of proof. But uh, is that, a, is that a, uh, a typical thing? Do most people are willing to accept the sort of... The yeah, they are. In fact, I get very good reactions from my clients. And, and, and most of them, when they're finished a session, they'll say, wow, that was great. I feel so good. I, some will say, this has really changed my life. I get comments after the fact in emails from them saying it was great and, uh, and, and you really, the answers I got really solved some of the mysteries in my life and, and, uh, and in some cases where they had physical ailments that were healed, they'll say, you know, that was great, wonderful and, uh, you know, they're very, they're very happy. So uh, do you have a, a sort of an explanation of, of how this works or do you, I mean, I've got some kind of an explanation in my mind because I've read a lot of near-death experiences that we do have a consciousness that can be put in a, in a higher level, a causal plane is how I mm -hmm. think of it, and that we can affect changes in the, in the material level. And would you say that that's true of, of quantum healing, that, that, you can, that you actually affect a physical change sometimes merely by hip, putting somebody into a hypnotic state? Yeah, it can occur. The practitioner doesn't do any healing or any changes. They just facilitate the higher okay. self from doing it for the person because the higher self could basically do anything. I mean, they can, I mean, I haven't had any really serious health issues uh, for my clients, but Dolores Cannon has had examples where somebody will walk into her session uh, on crutches. They can't walk. They leave the session, leave the crutches behind, or they have, they're scheduled for major surgery after the session and the higher self says, we'll heal you. They don't need the surgery anymore. I've had a couple of minor cases where one lady was, uh, she had an inexplicable pain in her leg that she's had like for ages. And the doctors can't figure out, there's nothing wrong with you, you know, you know why are you having this pain? Ask the higher self, and the higher self says, it's because her spine was slightly misaligned in one place. And I said to the higher self, well, can you fix that for her? And they said, sure. And so after she came out of the trance, she said to me, um, when the higher self said they were fixing it, she could feel things in her spine moving. Wow. And, and, and the pain was gone. Um, That's amazing. Yeah. And so those are just, but, but you know, it, it doesn't always work if, if uh, it's only works if, the, if it's appropriate for you. So if you have a physical ailment that you chose to, to have uh, before you incarnated as part of your life challenge, they won't change that. They won't, they won't me mess with your life plan. But if it's something that just sort of came um, uh, otherwise, uh, then they can help you. As long as you, as long as the client believes they can do it, it'll happen. That's very interesting. Garnet has written four books, and I've read, I've got one of them. I'm getting the rest of them now to read because I read Dancing on a Stamp, and it's just so fascinating. You can order them from his website if you're interested in these things. And I'd, uh, if you could just tell us this uh, a little bit about, let's see, the after Dancing on the Stamp, is there Dance of a Dancing Forever? No, that's the last one. Dancing that's Forever with Spirit. Dancing Forever with Spirit. Okay, so Astonishing Insights from Heaven. Do you want to just give a brief sure. overview of that? Sure. After I'd finished the manuscript for my first book, Dancing on a Stamp, Albert disappeared out of my life for a little while, and then he suddenly reappeared. And I, and I woke up one night in my, in my bed, and I could see this ghost-like ethereal figure standing in the doorway of my bedroom. When it moved closer to my bed, I could see it was my old friend Albert, except now he was in astral form. Oh. Okay. So I said, Albert, hi, what brings you here? What, what's up? And he said, I'm coming to take you on a series of astral trips to the spirit side, to other places on our planet, other places in the universe, because I want you to write about what you see and hear in your next book. And by the way, you're going to write three more. <laughs> it sort of took me back. <laughs> so then, so then uh, he took me, he literally grabbed my astral hand and pulled my astral body out of my physical body. I turned around and looked and my physical body was still asleep in bed. Is that the first time you've done yeah, that? Yeah, first time, okay. very first time. So you had assistance the first time. Oh, oh. That's nice. Yeah, you know, yeah, no, actually all the times. So I've always been with Albert when I'm uh, astral travel. So anyway, we float up through the ceiling, up through the clouds. He lets me sort of stop at a very high point above our beautiful planet to look, look back on it. Amazing how beautiful our planet is from that perspective. It's mm -hmm. like a jeweled pendant hanging in the inky blackness of space. So then 
he said, come on with me. And we went through a shimmering doorway to the spirit side. And there um, I, I ended up in a, in a beautiful meadow, like incredibly beautiful, like more so than any, any place you could ever see on earth, like lush green grass and trees and a thousand different kinds of wildflowers. We walked mm. up a hill and the other side I saw a group of souls waiting for me, a group of people. They, were, they looked like humans. As I got closer, my heart skipped a beat because I could see it was my mother, my father, uncles and aunts, and my brother who had already passed away. And so they were there to greet me, and give me warm hugs and, and, and wrap me in unconditional love. And, and that was, Albert said, that's the preview that all of us will have when we transition back to the spirit side, we'll be met by a welcoming group. So he gave me a preview of it because I'm, I'm still obviously, I wasn't dead yet. And then we went off to the, a beautiful white city there called Aglaia, where we ended up meeting with uh, uh, this wonderful council called the Council of Wise Ones. And that was my first trip. Um, the, the second, uh, the third, yes, the, the third and fourth books are also detail my astral travels with Albert, different places, speak to different people. Um, and, and so I, I basically, uh, I, I had a number of astral adventures with him and, and, and my books described what I saw and what I heard. So Dan, so the Heavenly Bliss is the third book. That's the last one, the fourth well, one. The, oh. Then Dance of oh, Eternal Rapture. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry, you're right. Dance of Heavenly Blessings. That's the third, third one. Yeah. Then Dance of yeah. Eternal Rapture. That's the fourth Ageless book. Wisdom from the yeah. Spirit. Well, I, I haven't read them yet, but I know from reading, the, having read the first one, that, that I'm going to be really interested in these. And I'm just fascinated with, with all of these things that are, that are going on. I mean, I've spent, uh, my wife and I have spent a lot of time watching Dolores Cannon videos on mm -hmm. YouTube, and that's how we found you. We watched mm -hmm. some uh, other QHHT practitioners mm -hmm. and uh, we both just decided that we wanted to do that and see what it was like and so we called you and set up appointments and my wife actually went first but but it's so nice to be able to do this right here locally on Vancouver Island I can tell you because a lot of people have to travel and it's something that you can really only do in person right you can't just do it on a Skype call yeah that's right that's one of the, the strict rules that Dolores set was it has to be done in person not by Skype or by phone. So that there's a sort of a geographical limitation in terms of, you know, ah. people could access to me. Either I go somewhere or they come here, but you know, I don't really travel around that much. And so it, it's a limiting factor. Mm -hmm. But it's really not. I mean, it's, it, it, as long as you can find somebody, then you're in good shape. And there seem to be more and more <laughs> of you QHHT practitioners around. I've looked on YouTube and they're it's yes. just full of them now. So who was Dolores Cannon? Why don't you tell us a little bit about her? Because she's the one that started this, right? Yeah. Well, she started off just uh, almost by accident, just doing hypnosis. And, and she, I'm not sure where she took her training from, but it was the basic sort of, I want to quit smoking, I want to lose weight kind of clients. Who, and she was doing that through hypnosis. And then almost by accident, one day she was regressing somebody back to uh, their childhood in this life to find out if there was a problem. And all of a sudden they flipped even further back into a different life. And so she thought this was interesting. So she learned about how to regress people. And then l later on, she found out that uh, every once in a while, she'd be talking to the person who was under hypnosis. And all of a sudden, it seemed like there was somebody else coming in and speaking. And then she uh. soon figured out that this was their higher self. And so she developed a technique whereby uh, the practitioners can access the higher self, ask the questions. And so and she developed this over a period of 40 years. She did thousands and thousands of sessions. She was very good at it. Um, and uh, unfortunately, she passed away and uh, well, she transitioned to the spirit side in October of 2014. So she's written a number of books also on this background information on this, hasn't she? Yeah, absolutely. She's written, I think, 19 or 20 books. Oh, my gosh. And most of them have a deal with her sessions. And there's, they're all different in terms of what, what, what was learned from the sessions. And, this, and, and it really, she just picks out the, the higher self part, the good, the good part of the sessions. And, and it, they're transcribed from the recordings, and that's what's in her books. And it's written, very fascinating. Some really, uh, you know, off, way, out of this world kind of stuff that came out of some of these sessions. So she's really a very well-known author. She's written that many books. Absolutely, yeah. She has, has a great following, um, and she's been all over the world giving lectures and, uh, and doing sessions and training people. Um, and, you know, she was very energetic. She died, I think she was in her mid-80s. So she and was she very, was still up and about. Oh, absolutely, yeah. Oh, well, that's fascinating. Do you have a, a particular, if people are interested in this, do you have a particular recommendation for one of her books that's particularly good? Because I imagine that, I mean, for me, uh, I, I went to church for, 50, for the first 50 years of my life and nobody talks about uh, reincarnation or, you mm -hmm. know, astral travel or any of that stuff. And I've, I've had my own experiences since then. 
but uh, I'm just wondering if there's anything, you know, to sort of get people into it that's not too... Uh, <laughs> Well, yeah, I'd suggest a, a couple of her earlier books. Uh, one is called Five Lives Remembered. Another one is called Between Life and Death. And that sort of mm. sets the stage for people who aren't really familiar with this area and they can kind of get, get the basis for what, you know, where she's coming from. Some of her later books are really quite, uh, uh, in, they're quite complicated, quite esoteric. And so I wouldn't advise people jumping into one of the later books, but start off with one of her earlier books and that will give you a good, a good grounding in terms of what she did. She sort of builds on the the past. Uh, oh yeah. I think I read an earlier book, and you know, it was uh, she talked about helping people quit smoking and things. And it's really funny that that you would go from something as mundane as just you know breaking habits to all of a sudden your it gets to be uh, the, your, your whole worldview. It, this has got to have just completely rocked your world. Oh, oh totally. Yeah, totally. And, and 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 you can see the development. If somebody's really anxious, they could start at her first book and move all the way through. You can see how things developed. Mm -hmm. um, but but it was right. It was done like over a period of forty years, and uh, and she's really perfected it. She started teaching it uh, maybe eight or ten years ago. So there are a number of QHHT practitioners, and and there's very set guidelines. We have to follow it according to how she did it. We're not supposed to vary. And okay. I tell you, it works. It really does. I can vouch for that. Mm -hmm. It does work. Okay, so one of the things uh, that I just wanted to delve into a little bit, if we have this sort of thing, or there, QHHT isn't the only past life regression therapy either. I've heard of that. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a Dr. Newton, I think, who, mm -hmm. uh, that was a Life Between Lives. I think mm -hmm. I read that, and that kind of got me into this, so I had a little bit of an introduction yes. before. But then you have people who are getting abducted by UFOs, and you have people who are... Uh, you know, doing, having a near-death experience. And those, to me, are very convincing because the, the, some of the things that happen to them when they come back, they're cured miraculously of, a, of something that they would normally be dead from. So what do you think is going on on this planet, Garnet? Because we don't talk about any of these things seriously. We pretend that the people who are uh, subject to these things are sometimes nuts. Well, it, it's getting better, actually. I mean, like uh, 30 years ago, I wouldn't have written my books, and, and if I did, nobody would have read them, and I certainly wouldn't be having an interview with you about this topic. But things are developing. More and more people are becoming spiritually aware. They're asking all the big questions. A lot of them are sort of uh, rejecting the religion they were taught when they were youngsters and, and are looking for new answers to uh, you know, the big questions in life. So there's a lot of people searching, and, and, and so it, it's, it's, it's becoming better and better and better. And, and there's still a lot of people, if I talk to them about what I do, who will roll their eyes, but there's a lot more people who will say, that's great, wonderful, good for you. I wonder if we're gonna hit some tipping point because this seems to me to be, once you, once you have this realization that you're not your body, I think we're all afraid of death. Mm -hmm. And so once you have this realization that I am not my body and I, I, even if I'm dead, I'm still, my consciousness still is alive. I mean, that, I, I know I got out of my body by myself accidentally a couple of times and then I started working on it and I know it's possible mm -hmm. um, but that changes you forever I mean you can't it's not a belief it's an experience that you've had and nobody can take away your experience so no, no for sure and, and, and once you sort of get to the point where, and to understand what Albert has told me and by you know by reading say my books then you're never going to be afraid of death again you know it's just a transition you're moving from one room to another because we're all eternal souls and, and we go on forever and we're here just to have a human journey to learn and experience things that we want for our evolution as a soul. And we chose to come here, chose our life. So you can never be a, you can never be a victim. You can never say, why did God put me here? Or why did the universe put me here? You put yourself here. Right. So whatever life you, you, the, the, you're into, you planned it before you were born. Plus you change it as you go because of your free will actions. So it's, it's sort of like you're the author of your own movie, so to speak. And uh, that's the way you should look at it. Well, I, I've been doing this show for since 2012, and it is frankly sometimes depressing to come out of here and hear what's going on in the world because there's just so much bad stuff going on. Right. But this really gets me excited. It gives me great hope because I, I just think, well, that's the point. The point is to get everybody to wake up and take a look at all these things. So I kind of think that that's what we're, we're going through, some kind of an amazing... Uh, transformation and waking up of everybody and before long everybody's this is just, just going to seem normal to everybody to access 
your past lives. And I mean, a lot of things go away when you realize, when you regress to a past life and you realize, oh, gee, I was a woman in one life. Or, exactly. And, and uh, I mean, one of the things that, that uh, my wife and I came away with in our, uh, in our sessions was that we'd been married previously. Mm -hmm. And uh, that was interesting, but the sexes were reversed. And I just found that fascinating. And it didn't even matter if it's not true to me. What it made me, what it did was it gave me a different camera angle on how I talk to my wife. Exactly. <laughs> and, and what our relationship is and everything else. So I just think that, uh, you know, if you start off with this, uh, just ease, if you like this kind of thing, that, that doing something like this, which is fairly gentle, I mean, I have friends who have taken ayahuasca and all sorts of other things which are not quite as gentle as this. Mm -hmm. You can still get there by doing these things and really change your consciousness and find out who you are and access that deeper level. So you, you uh, agree with that assessment, to right? Totally. It's, I mean, it, it, it is a very gentle way of getting into it. I mean, you, you don't, there's no uh, bodily harm. There's no, nothing that will make you ill or sick right. or anything. I mean, it's, it's designed to make you um, aware of the fact that you have past lives and that you have a this uh, higher your higher self is there with you all the time you know on your side trying to coach you and, and, and give you the good answers and you know at the end of the day you have nothing to lose I mean you can believe it that's great if you don't believe it well you've you know you lost four hours out of your day yeah right okay so we have about a minute left is there anything else you want to just say about th this topic or no, I just, I mean, if people like, would like to have a session, they can go to my website and they can just schedule it online. And, and these sessions go for anywhere between four to five hours. I'll uh, put your website up. On yeah, and my, my, yeah, and you just click onto my QHHD website. If you want information about my books, I have a book website. Um, and there's, you can get information on all my books. You can read an excerpt. You can get right to the online bookstores like Amazon and Barnes & Noble and the rest. Click right on there and you can get right to a point where you can buy my books. And... Uh, and I, I also have Facebook and all the other social media sites, so all the information is there. And if anybody has a comment or a question, send me an email. It's on my website. Great. Well, thank you very much. This has been a really fascinating topic for me. It's one of my favorite subjects because I really like to think that uh, humanity is headed in a good direction and, and that we're all waking up rather than we're headed for some mass destruction. <laughs> so I really appreciate your coming, taking the time and coming on the show and talking to us. So thank you for watching this segment of Citizens Forum and we'll be back.